everyone. I'm Ankur Goyal, a product manager on the Intune Copilot team. And along with me is Zach Dvorak and Carlos Brito. And today, we're here to talk to you about effective prompt engineering for IT Pro. What we're going to cover today are some examples of prompting in Copilot and Intune. What happens behind the scenes? Dive into the concepts of prompt engineering. And what do you need to think about when creating your prompts? Dive into some more examples and leave you with some tips. Now, if you've ever used any of the more common generative AI tools like ChatGPT or any of the Microsoft Copilot tools, you would have already experienced the fact that asking these tools a question and getting the response for what you're looking for isn't always straightforward. It takes a little bit of trial and error to get to the exact response you need. It's somewhat of a skill, but a skill that you can easily master if you understand the science behind it all. Before we dig in, I wanted to quickly highlight the co-pilot capabilities we have in Intune that are in public preview. Now, if you attended the other sessions specifically around Copilot and Intune, you would have already seen these details. We have Copilot capabilities for enterprise privilege management that helps you identify potential app risks. We have capabilities that help surface Intune managed device insights. Copilot assisted single device query where you can dig into device details with some real time data. And capabilities that help you with policy management and troubleshooting like impact of policy settings and understanding error codes. Now let's look at prompting inside Copilot in Intune. Today, inside Intune, we provide a scoped prompting experience. What that means is that we take away most of the burden of creating the right and specific prompt for what you're looking to do. What you see here is an example of device troubleshooting where we have already provided a list of effective prompts to explore device policies and assist with device troubleshooting. Not only that, once Copilot comes back with a response, we also provide a list of follow-up prompts for you to continue troubleshooting. Now let's take an example of comparing the device with another device prompt. Let's say you're digging into this specific uh, BYO-MVP non-compliant device, and you want to compare it to a compliant device to see what's going on, what, what are things that are different. When you invoke Copilot and select the compare device prompt, you actually get a follow-up. The device name or the ID of the device you want to compare it to. You can type in that device name of a compliant device. In this case, uh, CPC-Dean uh, looks to be the one that I want to compare it to. And then select what you want to compare. In this case, I want to do compliance policies, but you also have hardware, configuration policies, and so on. And once you've selected that, just hit on Submit. And what you see now is Copilot coming back with a response detailing the difference in compliance policies across the two devices. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you need to dig more, we also have some follow-up prompts for you, like maybe comparing it to some other device uh, because this one didn't give you much information. And so instead of going back all the way, you can do it from right here. So here, we've actually taken the complexity of crafting the right prompt behind the scenes by offering you a list of options to choose from. Now, let me walk you through a different example. One, where we actually give you the capability to type your prompt. Say you're digging into a device and really need access to some real-time data for the device. In order to get that, you need to write a Custo query. Well, if you don't know Custo or just need some help formulating the right query, you can actually use the single device query feature. 
Let me walk you through it. When you're in the device details page, you can go on the device query tab and invoke Copilot through query with Copilot button. Here you see along with the list of scope prompts like show me all active processes or which OS version is running on the device, you also have the option to create your own prompt. In this case, show me the RDP port configured in the registry of this device. And what Copilot is doing is going back and trying to figure out what should be the right Custo query that will give you this data. Once Copilot comes back with that Custo query right here, you can choose to add it to the editor to modify it if you think something is missing or directly run it as well. And what you see now is the data that's coming back to give you that RDP port configuration in the registry. So what I showed you are two very different prompting experiences that are available today in Intune. Now, I'll let Zach walk you through what is actually happening behind the scenes. Thanks, Ankur. My name is Zach Dvorak. I'm a product manager on the Copilot and Intune team. Let's dive into behind the scenes of what Anchor just showed you so that we can see what's happening between the time you click that submit button and when Copilot generates your response. If you're familiar with Copilot and Intune at all, you probably know that it's part of the Microsoft Security Copilot platform. Security Copilot is the generative AI platform for all products in the Microsoft Security Suite, including Intune, Intra, Defender, Sentinel, Purview, and Priva. Within Security Copilot, we have what we call plugins. These are gonna add context about other products, such as the ones I just mentioned, as well as third-party products. Within these plugins, they're gonna enable specialized capabilities that allow you to retrieve and process data from these integrated products. If you jump over to the Security Copilot platform, you can see the list of plugins available in your platform settings. You'll notice here, Microsoft Intune is one of those plugins that you can enable in the list. This is where all of those Copilot and Intune capabilities that Anker walked you through are gonna live. So let's go back to that example Anker gave of comparing two devices. When you construct this prompt, when you make this request to Copilot, there's a lot going on behind the scenes here to ensure that Copilot has all of the information that it needs to give you an effective response. You'll notice you're in the Intune portal. This provides information about the source. We're teeing off of that Intune plugin that we just saw. Since you're on a specific device page, this context is going to be available to Copilot, so we know that this is the first device within your comparison. When you select the specific prompt that you're interested in, you're identifying a goal. You're telling Copilot what you're hoping to get out of this interaction. And when you select that prompt, Copilot is going to ask you for some additional content. This is going to help frame your expectations. You'll be able to identify what type of comparison you'd like to see, and then, of course, there's going to be required information like the second device that you want to compare with. Now, this scoped prompt experience has the benefit of being very easy to use. Intune is going to guide you through the process of constructing your prompt. That way, we can kind of stack the deck in your favor of getting a valid and acceptable response to your query. The trade-off here is that you have very minimal flexibility with how you prompt. When we think of open prompting systems, like Microsoft 365 Copilot, for example, that's gonna give you maximum flexibility. You're gonna be able to request a much broader range of, of queries, and you're gonna be able to ask general questions in natural language. The trade-off here is that the response quality is gonna be directly tied to the effectiveness of your prompt. This is where this concept of prompt engineering becomes super important. So when you're using products like the Security Copilot standalone platform, or like Microsoft 365 Copilot, you're going to need to make sure that the prompts you write are effective so that that can lead to the effective responses that you're looking for. As we move toward a more open prompting model within Intune as well, with that in mind, I'm going to hand it over to Carlos, who's going to talk us through prompt engineering and give you some tips to keep in mind when you're constructing open prompts. Thank you, Zach. Hi, everyone. I am Carlos Brito, and I'm a product manager at Microsoft. To help us understand how to craft more effective prompts, let's look at prompt engineering. 
A fascinating and crucial aspect of working with large language model systems, such as Copilot. Prompt engineering is the art and science of crafting effective inputs that guide the systems to produce high quality, relevant, and diverse outputs. Prompt engineering involves creating prompts, which are pieces of text that instruct Copilot on what kind of output to produce. This process is essential because it directly influences the quality of the system's responses. A well-crafted prompt can lead to insightful and useful outputs, while a poorly designed one can result in irrelevant or repetitive responses. A prompt can include various types of data, such as text, documents, URLs, audio, or even images. The key is to provide clear and specific instructions to the system, ensuring it understands the context and the desired outcome. Prompt engineering is a form of human-in-the-loop interaction. This means that we, as users, provide guidance or constraints to the systems through the prompt, and the system then generates an output based on this input. This interaction allows us to harness the power of the LLM system, while still maintaining control over the output. The impact of a well-designed prompt cannot be overstated. It can elicit high quality, relevant, and diverse responses from Copilot. But on the other hand, a poorly designed prompt can lead to a low quality, irrelevant, or repetitive outputs. Therefore, understanding how to craft effective prompts is crucial for maximizing the potential of Copilot. To illustrate this, we will look at a few examples of effective prompts and their corresponding outputs using Microsoft 365 Copilot. Let's start by taking a look at an example prompt and the output from Microsoft 365 Copilot. It is a simple instruction to create a list of holidays in 2025, and we will take a closer look at each aspect of this prompt in the next few slides. There are four elements that makes up an effective prompt. The first one is the goal. This is where you define the specific information that you need, and you use verbs like summarize, create, find, just like the prompt that we uh, revealed earlier. The second one is context. This is where you define why you need this information and how you intend to use it. So for this, you could use things like, I need this for a monthly status report, or to identify a new set of conflict that has come up lately in Intune, for example. The next one is expectations. This is where you specify the format that you want the result to be formulated in by Copilot, or the audience that the uh, output is tailored to. So this could include an info that you need to provide to your CIO, which must be clearly listed in a table format, for example, for greater quality. And lastly, it is the source. This is where you define where the data needs to come from. So for this one, you could, for example, specify that you need the information to come from Intune, or to come from Defender Instance, or even from a file uh, that contains additional relevant information about the output that you're trying to get. We'll now take a look at a few prompt examples to analyze their effectiveness using Microsoft 365 Copilot. For the first example, we will review the original sample prompt that we saw earlier. If we now apply the four elements of an effective prompt, we can see that this only contains the go element, which is to create a list of all holidays in 2025, and the rest of the elements like context, expectation, and source are missing. As a result, you can see that the output provided is also a generic list of holidays based on my locality in response to the broad and general prompt that was used in my input. The second example includes additional elements that make the input more specific. It contains the goal, which is to create a list. It also narrows down the list of holidays to US only. And it provides the expectation that the result must be in a table format, 
but you still have a few important elements missing, like context and source. As you can see, the additional expectation element provided shaped the copilot response by listing the result in a table format, as was requested in the prompt. Our last example contains all four key elements of an effective prompt, making it a much more precise input to Copilot. It contains the goal, which is to create a list, the expectation, which is to use a table format for the output, the context that the info will be used for vacation planning, and finally, the source, which is to leverage an existing file containing all the work holidays. In response, the Copilot output is now a lot more tailored to my needs and the list of holidays aligned with those contained in the file that I specified in my prompt. Here are a few additional tips for creating effective prompts. When crafting prompts, it is absolutely important to be as specific as you can. When creating effective prompts, shorter is not necessarily better. For example, it is better to say, draw me a picture of a Siamese cat playing with a feathered toy, rather than simply draw me a picture of a cat. The more detailed prompt results in a much more precise output from Copilot. Iterating is also key to refining the results, as Copilot will act on your feedback. So the back and forth can lead to better outputs. For example, you could start your prompt by saying, create a list of top news headlines. And after you get the results, which may include additional items that you may want to remove from your list, you could provide the feedback to Copilot in the next prompt to say, do not include anything related to sports to help you refine the list, only the items that you wanna see in the top news headlines. And finally, Providing additional context and using keywords can drastically improve results. For example, if you specify a prompt, create a weekly meal plan under 1200 calories using the Paleo Diet PDF, will yield a much more specific results than simply asking to create a weekly meal plan. Here are some additional points for you to consider. Due to the nature of large language models, responses may include incorrect content. So it is important for you to evaluate and cross-reference responses with trusted sources. Also, using the same prompt multiple times can result in slightly different responses due to how large language models are built. So keep that in mind as you define your use cases. And finally, Use Copilot in a respectful, ethical, and lawful manner. And we ask you to refer to the responsible AI principles and standards documentation for more information. We'll leave you with some additional resources to help you learn more about creating effective prompts, and we'll make them available to you in the session's notes. On behalf of Zach, Anchor, and I, I would like to thank you for attending our session. I hope you found it helpful. Goodbye.